Seattle, city volunteers encourage locals to come and get vaccinated. A three-year-old girl relies on respiratory tubes to live, facing hardships with optimism. Welcome to Thai Headlines, I'm Hu Chao. Thank you for joining us. In Seattle, temporary vaccination stations are established in communities. One city volunteer, who works part-time at ICHS, told Siji Seattle branch about this news. Therefore, Siji has invited ICHS to serve nearby residents at the Siji office. In July in Washington, there is the happy atmosphere of free movement. The government has been encouraging residents to get vaccinated, including those who are more than 12 years old. International Community Health Services is willing to set up pop-up clinics. Angela Wen, who works part-time at the clinic, has told Siji Seattle branch about the news. <laughs> We can help nearby residents or Chinese community in Seattle. There are still people who have not got vaccinated. In the beginning, we set up temporary vaccination stations near our clinic and Chinatown. In the beginning, it was easy. As we tried providing the service, later we went to faraway locations. If there are needs, we will go there. The 12-year-old Chinese-American girl has been vaccinated with the companionship of her father and younger brother. It is fast, it will be fine. The needle is small, so you do not need to fear. Of course, I will get nervous before receiving the shot. There is no need to be nervous, as it is very fast. Nearby residents have also come to get vaccinated. We live nearby, so I, I drove past this morning and I saw the sign outside and said everyone welcome. So. The medical workers have walked into the communities to provide vaccination services for people, hoping to safeguard their health. As Malaysia's COVID cases rise, the government is forced to establish multiple vaccination centers in order to speed up the rate of vaccinations. UTAR's campus becomes a drive through vaccination station, assisting the government in their efforts to vaccinate the public. COVID-19 continues to spread in Malaysia. On July 13th, the COVID-confirmed cases in Malaysia per day passed 10,000. As the cases rise every day, the Director General of Health, Nur Hisham, warned citizens to strictly follow COVID prevention measures while signing up to receive vaccinations. We discovered that vaccinations will reduce the chance of hospitalization. As of now, we found the Delta and Beta variants after receiving the vaccination, we still can get infected, but the chance to infect others is reduced by half. In order to speed up vaccination plans, the Malaysian government has established multiple vaccination centers in government clinics, public halls, university halls, and sports stadiums. UTR's campus will also become a vaccination station, as citizens may receive shots here. There is a vaccination center in UTAR. It is at a university hall, but since the hall is small, only 600 people can receive vaccinations. So if we want to increase the vaccination rate, we need a larger space. There is another space next to our campus with larger space and more parking lots. It's a more ideal location for a vaccination center. If we can utilize that, that we can guide some people from the campus to this place for vaccination. UTAR's drive through vaccination station shares the vaccination workload with Camp Hors vaccination center. After receiving the first vaccine, citizens may remain in their vehicle as the process becomes quick and easy. Though UTR has their own medical department, the medical team is at a different campus. Facing this issue, team of members in Perak arrived to help. I am grateful to these medical workers. They took a day off. A doctor even closed his clinic on Mondays to come over to help us with vaccinations. As the pandemic grows serious, it is important to work together, reaching the final goal of herd immunity. Because setting up a vaccination isn't that easy, we need to talk to related departments and request certifications. I'm thankful to many people who stood out. For example, St. John Ambulance provided us with an ambulance parked at the vaccination center. 
We are also thankful to Tima because they have sent over 20 doctors and volunteers to help. It is hoped that citizens can get vaccinated soon, bring an end to COVID-19. To battle the pandemic, Malaysia government calls for more medical volunteers. Retired Dr. Leong Hen Chun and dentist Tan Kuang Ming have both volunteered at the vaccination station. Let's meet these compassionate medical volunteers. In order to control the pandemic and reach herd immunity by the end of the year, Malaysia government is now speeding up the speed of COVID vaccinations. Until July 14th, they have given more than 12,600,000 vaccination shots. A total of 12% of residents have received two shots of vaccinations. To ensure that more residents may receive the vaccination shots, the government has added more vaccination stations. As a result, they need a lot of medical volunteers. Parak Tima volunteer Li He Chung is conducting consultation before vaccinating residents at Taku Abdul Rahman Reg University. We are providing a second dose of vaccinations. We need to see if they have side effects. If they have side effects and are allergic to vaccinations after being vaccinated, we need to help them out. However, up until now, there has not been any emergency cases. While he should enjoy retirement, he still sees the opportunity to serve people. At the beginning, the government said that they need a lot of volunteers. They said that the ages of the volunteers at vaccination stations should be between 18 to 60. I thought that I did not qualify since I'm more than 60 years old. I also hesitated about helping out at the vaccination stations at Tonku Abdul Rahman University because I no longer have a doctor's license after retirement. I asked the person in charge and he said that all registered doctors can join them. That is good, so I joined them. In order to volunteer, Li Hu Chu must drive for two hours for Kuala concert to the vaccination station. This is challenging for a senior, but Li Hu Chu enjoys volunteering. I enjoy helping people through volunteering with Ziji. Since 2016, I have not practiced medicine as I did not have the chances. Now that I can contribute my efforts as a doctor, I am very happy. Another doctor, Tan Kuang Ming, has registered when the government was recruiting medical volunteers. As long as he has time, he will go vaccinate residents at the vaccination station. I'm a dentist who usually works in a clinic. On average, I would spend one to two days a week to volunteer at the vaccination station. This is something I'm able to do. If I can speed up the process and help out, I will do my best. After the government has set up more vaccination stations, there's more need for volunteers. As long as they have the needs, I'll help out. Before vaccinating the residents, Tang Kuang Ming will answer people's questions regarding the vaccination so they may feel at ease. If the residents prefer a certain brand of vaccination doses, Tang Kuang Ming will also persuade them that all vaccination shots are beneficial. Most of the time, we receive positive feedback. Many people are very grateful to the medical volunteers at the vaccination station. This is our motivation to continue serving the people. These medical volunteers are not afraid of contracting the virus, and they help the government vaccinated citizens. They hope they help the country reach herd immunity so that the pandemic may end soon. In Taichung, Taiwan, a three-year-old girl suffers from abnormal lung development, relying on a respirator since birth. Although seeking medical treatment is challenging, she has stayed optimistic. Being thin and small, Chen Chen looks outside the window. From her nose, a long tube is connected to the respirator and oxygen cylinder. She cannot live without relying on the tube. Three-year-old Chen Chen has been using respirator since she was born. She weighs 10 kilograms, but the medical equipment is 20 kilograms, which is hard to push. Despite that, Chen Chen is very independent. When she goes to the doctor, she will think of ways to help her mother. After entering the hospital, Chen Chen has to pay attention to her surrounding area. 
Dai Chen Guan Zi. Due to her abnormal genes, her lungs have not fully developed. As a result, she must use two tubes, which are connected to respirator. Therefore, the doctor calls her teletubby. She has a hard time because if she gets angry, she will lack oxygen. Optimistic Chen Chen does not want adults to worry for her. Instead, if there are children crying in the clinic, she will try to calm everyone's mind. She likes to make you laugh. She will have certain facial expressions which makes you laugh. Chen Chen has a lot of tricks to make people laugh. She also helps her mom change her younger brother's diaper. If she wants to live a normal life, she will have to undergo a lung transplant. In mid-May, the pandemic broke out once more in Taipei and New Taipei City, with over 100 COVID confirmed cases per day. Patients with light symptoms are sent to the quarantine locations instead of hospitals. Upon receiving requests from quarantine stations, Taipei Chinese Medical Association provided services for patients with light symptoms. The association's service has led 10 patients to recover from COVID-19. Moving on, 22 associations established Chinese medicine hotlines, providing free medical advice to citizens on weekdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Though the patient suffers from breathing issues, she can finally talk with the doctor. In the video call, Mei Yu is one of the COVID confirmed patients from Wanghua district as she once suffered from severe dizziness. Patient Mei Yu was declared COVID positive on May 16th, as on the day she moved into a quarantine hotel. Twelve days later, she was tested above the cycle threshold of 30, going out of a quarantine phase, then returning home to self-monitor. Though after returning home, she still suffers from symptoms such as headache and throat pain. After the quarantine phase, she still suffers from severe symptoms such as heartache and chest pain. Through a recommendation from a friend, Mei Yu was treated by a Chinese medicine doctor through video calls. Starting May 28th, her tongue was uneven and has blisters, tongue coating. Her face also appears to be pale. On May 29th, she started drinking Chinese medicine, producing coughing symptoms. Two days later, she no longer suffers from stomach and chest pain. By July 1st, her tongue situation became normal. So, uh, uh, Light blue tongue means bruises that are not dealt with. If the tongue coating is white and thick, it means the body still has inflammation. Chinese medicine doctor Huang Jianrong uses different types of Chinese medicine to treat Mei Yu's symptoms as her overall condition improved. Symptoms such as chest tightness, abdominal bloating, and lung inflammation slowly healed over time. Through a video call, doctors hold clinical sessions for the patient. But in Chinese medicine, doctors must do pulse diagnosis in order to understand the patient's body condition. Due to the format of a video call, Chinese medicine doctors must prepare more questions. We can ask them in detail, for example, do you feel like sleeping? Do you feel like not talking? Do you feel tired? We can understand their situation through a series of questionnaires. In order to better understand the patient's condition, Huang Jianrong will acquire the ID number from patient, then using it to understand the condition through National Health Insurance Administration system. Afterwards, he will ask the patient to take a photo of their own tongue, though the lighting will also affect the image. White light is more accurate. Some of my patients gave me photos with substantial differences because their photos are taken at a hospital, which has more white light. The second photo is taken at a quarantine hotel, which has more yellow light. Fully protected to deliver medicine, Huang Jinrong says that since doctors know well how to protect themselves, it's best for them to deliver the medicine to a specific location, though he's not allowed to visit a patient's home. My patient is still in quarantine. She contacted me two days before going out of quarantine for telemedicine session. After I sent in the Chinese medicine to the local youth activity center, she ate it and she got off quarantine.
某一些呼吸道的疾病呢？你有哪边不舒服？After she returned home, she has no friends or family. Therefore, she stopped eating because there's no food to eat. Her friends or family members are either at hospitals or at quarantine hotels. So I felt bad for them, especially the groups of patients at Wanhua District. As doctors who heard that some patients stop eating, they will bring or gather food on behalf of the suffering patient. Chinese medicine through telemedicine video calls has brought hope to patients. Though they are at home, these doctors have utilized their profession to calm worried patients. In Canada, City North Toronto liaison an office, two volunteers discovered a poster on a local domestic violence prevention center as the office looks to collect supplies for people in need. Afterwards, supplies were quickly purchased, then given to the center. After seeing the center's poster at a coffee shop, volunteers from Zichy North Toronto Liaison Office immediately initiated a grocery plan. Volunteers firstly arrived at a supermarket, purchasing 30 sets of bed sheets and pillowcases, children diapers, disinfectant wipes, sun cream, and kitchen paper towels. After organizing, these supplies are sent to the local yellow brick house. Due to COVID, we've had a lot of women lose their houses, their children need a place to do their schoolwork, they need a place to go to school, and the mothers need to be there to help them. So receiving items like this, the new bed sheets, the sunscreen so the kids can play outside, it really makes such a large impact on their lives. And it'll help them get back on their feet, transition out of our shelters, and start a brand new life in a new home. Faced with the pandemic, the Indonesian government provided direct cash assistance to impoverished families. In order to avoid gatherings, staff went door-to-door -to, -door to send subsidies to the needy. Each family can receive 20 US dollars at a time. Here's more. Facing the challenge of the pandemic, the Indonesian government has implemented various social assistance programs to alleviate impoverished families affected by the pandemic. One of them was the distribution of cash subsidies, which was divided into 13 stages and distributed once a month until the end of June. Besides distributing cash subsidies through Indonesia Post Office, some of them are distributed door-to-door -to, -door to residents. One of the regions is in Sikaran City, Love Bagasi, West Java. Indonesia Post Office cooperated with local villages so that the subsidies can be distributed properly and to make it convenient for the elderly and physically handicapped people to receive the subsidies. We can look at the on-site situation. When someone needs us to deliver the subsidies to their home, we can go door to door, but we mainly focus on the handicapped and the elderly first. To avoid gathering, we also restrict the number of people inside the post office. But still, there are some residents going to the nearby post office in person to get the subsidies. Visiting the residents and giving cash subsidies in person really made the recipients very happy. Wuyan Chi was very surprised to see the postman come and brought her subsidy. She is 65 years old and stays at home to avoid the risk of infection. I'm a snack vendor. This subsidy is indeed very helpful to me. I'm very grateful. I really want to come out to do business. But because of the pandemic, I can only stay at home. Some of the subsidies are sent from door to door. As I see he has mobility issue, I ask the staff to deliver the subsidy to his home in person so that those with mobility issues do not have to go to the post office to collect the subsidies. In addition to facilitating the aid recipients, it is easier for the staff to make home visitations to confirm and check the information of the residents. Once inconsistent information is found and confirmed the recipient is not eligible, the subsidy will be cancelled immediately. The director of the Sigaran City Post Office stated that, in the first phase of distribution, 6% of the information was found inconsistent and the subsidies were returned. 
Nah makanya itu peran cata kantor pos karena memang kita uh, langsung bersentuhan dengan masyarakat. Saya pikir pas lah. That's the role of the post office because the postman can communicate with residents in person. For me, it is the right choice. So we visited those residents who cannot come to collect subsidies in person. And our employees are scattered around. Apart from doing the regular packages, they have to send cash subsidies at night. Rutin kami di surat paket. Kita juga nanti malamnya tugas untuk penyaluran langsung ke door to door ke masyarakat mengenai itu. At present, 96% of the cash distribution in Sigaran City has been completed, which is equivalent to 29,687 local households that have received cash subsidies. During this pandemic. To give local residents a place to breathe some fresh air, a community in Tangerang City has been turned into a green garden, where residents can come read a book and take in the view of all that is green. In Tangerang City, the residents at Porous Residence of Chipondong Indai Village have successfully transformed their surroundings into a green space. Baby, the person who started to greenify the area, says this project began in 2017, and the goal was to meet the city government's beautification project. Currently, they have turned what was once a wasteland into a green garden space, where the people can relax or try their hand at growing vegetables, herbs, and other useful plants. Kuriang ini singkatannya dari sejuk, unik, aman, nyaman, dan guyup. This green space is put together with the goal of refreshing, unique, comfortable, and united concepts. We want the people to come here to gain a sense of happiness. This was just a wasteland of about five to six thousand square meters. We have used about eighty percent of the land here. Kurang lebih ada lima ribu enam ratus meter persegi, di mana sudah delapan puluh persen lahan ini sudah kami bangun. The government also set up a reading room in this green space, also encouraging women to start farming as well as the cultivation of a black soldier fly farming to turn organic waste into protein for a natural fertilizer. The residents' creativity has turned the corner of this neighborhood into an example of green space for others in Tinker Rang to follow. This green space at the Sipando Inda village is unbelievable thanks to the government for enacting a greenified project in the community as it's become a much needed thing for the people as well. Perintah Kapung Tematik sekarang sudah menjadi kebutuhan masyarakat. Not only using each inch of the land to the fullest, it is hoped that this new space can provide a relaxing outdoor space for the local people. In Taidong's Haiduan Township, a bear by the name Mulas was released back into the wild on May 2020. Workers from the Forestry Bureau made contact with Mulas and retrieved the data from a satellite collar. The data will be helpful to the preservation of the Formosan black bear species. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.